What's going on, people? It's your boy, Kalechi, back with another episode of the Ramblin' Mind Podcast. How are each and every single one of y'all doing today? I hope y'all are staying safe. I hope y'all are taking care of yourselves. I hope y'all are doing all the things you know you ought to do during these times, my friends. Hope y'all are doing well. I can tell you this much. I'm doing very well. Post-vacation, man, I enjoyed. Me and my brother did this road trip. Drove from... Birmingham all the way across the United States of America to the West Coast went to San Francisco it was fun it was fun it was a good road trip I'm not gonna lie there were many a moments during the road trip where I was scared where I was scared out of my mind I mean literally I could feel the cortisol flowing through my body as I started to tense up at various points during the trip Oh man, we drove up so many different mountains where I was just like, and it had all these curvy roads and I just, I don't know, me and heights, we don't mix very well. I'm not very good with heights. And so I was just scared multiple times that I was just scared. Uh, If it was anybody else, I probably would never ever have done some of the things that I did over the last two weeks. But because I was with my brother, I did this. I'm not even sure if I'm happy that I faced those tensions or whatever all i know is it's done and we here now we here now it was a great great trip we stopped in so many different places it was so much fun spending that time with him and just enjoying his company and yeah it was it was wonderful it was great it was great to be able to be a part of that and be able to join him in that trip but yeah so now we're back we're back your boys all the way refreshed Ready to go is gunning to go once again. And guess what? We are now fully in the second half of the year 2023. Ain't that crazy? I mean, yesterday was just January and today is already July. Man, six months of the year is gone. And now we're in the seventh month of the year. Seventh month of the year. That is crazy. We thank God. I just thank God for him bringing us all the way to this month. All the way to this month. First of all, yesterday, as of when you guys will be watching this or listening to this, was the greatest day that existed on this planet Earth. You know why? Because it was my birthday. That's right. That's right. July 3rd is the greatest day in the history of life because I was born on that day. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. It's the greatest day ever. Because I was born on July 3rd. So I just thank God for adding another year to my life it's the last birthday of my 20s this is the final year of when i'll say i am 20 after this year it's gonna be a three and then so on and so forth i'll be turning 29 and with that a few thoughts have been racing in my head a few things have been rolling around in my head it kind of is gonna come off very jumbled there's a number of things that i've been i've been um thinking through and thinking about as I'm entering into this final year of this decade of my life. And there's just a few things that I've been thinking about. And it all started with a quote that I heard from Morgan Housel, which I really like this quote. It is, uh, the grass is greener on the side laced with bullshit. The grass is always greener on the side laced with bullshit. You see, Growing up, and even after I graduated from college, I thought I needed a few things that would make my life better, sweeter, and easier to a degree. I would say to myself, all I need is a decently well-paying job. I need a house. I need a car. I need money. I need an audience. I need health. And maybe I need somebody to love me like I love them too. (laughs) You know? Those were the things I thought I needed coming out of college. Those were the things that I believed was all that I needed in life. I didn't need, this was it. That was it. But the problem is, there's always more. There's always something more. There's always something better. There's always seemingly somebody else doing a little bit better. There's always seemingly something much better. So I have the job, but it's not enough. I need the promotion. Not only do I need the promotion at work, I also need my side hustle to bring in substantial income. I need to create my own business as well. I have a house, but I need a bigger house because I may have kids and I need more space. 
I have a car, but I need a newer car with the newer features. I remember when I first got my car, all I wanted in my car was a Bluetooth, uh, was it to have Bluetooth so I could easily connect and pair my car. Now that is not enough. Now I need my car to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or the uh, the self-driving features. I needed to have all of that. I needed to have all the things. I need to have automatic windshield wipers and automatic light beams and all of these things. I need it in my car. I have a little bit of money, but I need more money. That emergency fund is not going to fund itself. That early retirement is not going to fund itself. That trip that I want to take is not going to buy itself. So I have a little bit of money, but I need more money so I can enjoy life just a little bit more. I have an audience. Shout out to every single one of y'all that are listening to this podcast or watching this YouTube video. But I need a larger audience. So I can feel a bit more validated for all the time that I spend creating this content. I'm healthy, but you could always be healthier. I want to look like a Greek God. I want to look like Adonis. I want to look like that guy on the Old Spice commercial that gets all the ladies sweating. And so on and so on. There is always more. There is always something better. There is always something greater to aspire towards. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a part of this that is actually good. We need to continue to grow. We need to continue to develop because the moment we stop growing is the moment we start dying. However, as my mom always used to tell me, if you drink too much water, you're going to hurt your stomach. In other words, too much of a good thing is not good. It's good that I want these things. It's good that I want to aspire and gain these things. However, I know these things will not fulfill me. But yet, but yet, I continue to choose to believe the lie that if I just accomplish this, if I just choose that, if I can just grab onto this thing, I will get the fulfillment that I seek. I said earlier that I am getting older and... I'm getting to a point where some of the things that I thought were so far off are becoming realities. Some of the hills that I, some of the things that I thought were hills that I'll only face in the future are becoming mountains that I have to climb now. My parents are going older. I am hoping to get married in the future soon, which means I'll probably have to do some kind of wedding. Uh, Kids are in the line. The possibility of doing more at work is now in your hands. Being in a leadership role is now right there. And so responsibilities have changed. And because those responsibilities have changed, the requirements have also changed. And now these new responsibilities require new goals. And so there's a part of me that feels stuck. That feels stuck that my only option is to continue to chase. That my only option is to continue to do more, even though I know it will never be enough. I feel stuck. So I feel like I got to chase. I have to get the promotion so I can get a higher pay. So I have to try and build this business so I can make more money. I have to continue to find ways to make more income because I am chasing after this financial independence thing. It's like a trap that I continue to put myself in when I have the key to free myself. But I keep chasing in the hopes, in the hopes, in the hopes that maybe, maybe when I get to that side, the grass will be greener. When I know the real question to be asking myself is, can I handle the stench of the manure that will be needed for that grass to be greener? Can I handle the way I will smell 
from standing in that grass that is seemingly now greener. But rather than facing those questions, I run from it. And just choose to believe that I can hold my breath long enough to be able to cross the ridge and get to that final destination of what I'm chasing after. That I can run across the stench and the stench won't stay on me. That I will be the first in history to be able to avoid smelling like the stench of the manure. And this is the question that I keep asking myself, or rather, this is a question I keep running from. Are you truly chasing after the things that you enjoy, or are you just chasing after things you feel an obligation to? And is more really the answer to what you need? And then I saw this quote from... The Stoic Seneca. For so long, I thought there were only two options. Either you choose door A, which is never reach the things that you need. Or door B, which is chase, 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 chase. Stay on that hedonic treadmill. But there's a third way. As Seneca the Stoic said, it is not the man who has little, but he who desires more that is poor. Or Socrates, who said, he is richest who is content with the least, for content is the wealth of nature. See, coming into 2023, the word, my word for 2023 was a Hebrew word that meant a Hebrew word, dayinu, which means it would have been enough. It is part, it's a, it's a song that is, it's a word that is sang as part of a song during the Hebrew celebration of Passover. And what they say is, it would have been enough, but God did so much more. For example, it would have been enough that I just had a little place to stay, but God did so much more and blessed me with this house. It would have been enough that I have this house. But I also have a fridge full of food. It would have been enough that I am recording this right now. But I have people who actually listen to the words that I'm saying. It would have been enough to be alive. But I have great health, a great family, loving friends, and someone special to me. It would have been enough... To have a car to get me from A to B, but I have the car that I've always wanted in the Honda Accord Coupe. Come on now. That car is fire. (laughs) It would have been enough to just have God, but I get to call him my father and have a personal relationship with him. So these are... Weird, I know, sorry, thoughts are very jumbled and is all over the place. But this is where I am as I enter into my 29th year of life. It's just a place where I am trying to get to a place where I'm not just chasing for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. But where I can be content in where I am. This does not mean that I don't aspire for greater things. But I can fully say, thank God I am living my rich life. In other words, I am able to do the things that I want and I'm able to do. I'm able to live the life that I want to live. So as I enter the 29th year of life, some people have a lament of, oh my God, I'm about to turn 30. I have an opposing view of it. Um, I'm not a big birthday celebrate celebrator. I don't celebrate my birthday like that. Um, but I love a line from a song from Andy Mino in his song in 1988. He said, 
what's your other option? You either in the grave or you get another year. So blow these candles out. We just happy that you here. And that's kind of where I am. I'm just kind of happy that I'm still here. This is not ecstatic excitement. Neither is it sadness. But it's just a baseline embrace of the reality of where I am. So, happy birthday to me. Hoorah.